Congressman Adam Schiff uh, joins us now from Washington. Sir, thanks very much for being with us. Appreciate your time tonight. You bet. Um, I'm gonna, I'd like to tell you what I observed a little bit today in terms of new factual information we didn't have before. And if you could just let me know if there are other things that we've missed in terms of new things that were disclosed. Um, obviously, the headline is that the FBI has confirmed a counterintelligence investigation into the Russian attack and potential coordination with the Trump campaign. We know it started mid -July, or late July. Um, we also have the FBI and the NSA confirming their assessment that the Russians did this loudly and didn't particularly try to cover their tracks. Uh, the FBI director also told you that it appears that the Russians directly released the first tranche of stolen documents that they had, but the second one through WikiLeaks appears to have had some sort of intermediary. All of those pieces of information to me were sort of nuggets that I drew out of today's five and a half hour hearing. Uh, but I wonder if, if there are other things that you saw today that have been publicly disclosed now for the first time. Uh, you know, I'm not sure that I can point to any others, but, uh, you know, I, I would say this uh, with respect to Director Comey's uh, discussion of uh, the Russians loudly making their presence known. I'm not sure that I would draw that same conclusion. And part of this is a question of what the Russians intended at the outset. Uh, it may very well be that when the Russians first penetrated the Democratic Party computers, uh, it was merely a foreign intelligence gathering operation, and they didn't feel the necessity of very cleverly hiding their tracks because it's something the Russians have always done in terms of foreign intelligence gathering. Uh, but when they decided to move to the weaponization of that data, then it became more important for them to hide their tracks. Hmm. Uh, then they needed more plausible deniability in terms of the platforms they would use to publish the material. So I'm not sure it's as simple as, well, the Russians were really intending to send us a signal here. That's possible. Uh, I think it may be more likely, frankly, that the Russians were either clumsy or what started out as an intelligence gathering operation later turned into something different. On the point of um, the Russians releasing information themselves, uh, the Guccifer and uh, DC leaks release of information versus the Russians using an intermediary for later uh, releases of documents, including through WikiLeaks. What's your understanding of, uh, of the importance there or, or the basis for that conclusion? Well, I can't go too much beyond what the director talked about today, but, you know, it's clear that in some cases they have a more direct relationship or essentially the persona like Guccifer II uh, is a reflection of the Russian GRU. There's not much distance, uh, if any, between the personnel that are, are collectively the identity of Guccifer II and Russian intelligence itself. Uh, in other cases where they wanted more deniability, war more distance, they used a platform like WikiLeaks. Uh, now, whether they directly uh, engage Julian Assange or indirectly, one thing is pretty clear. Uh, not only does Donald Trump have a hard time criticizing Russia, so does Julian Assange. Uh, and why is that? Is there some relationship there? Uh, I don't know the answer, but I do think it's worth our finding out. Congressman, um, on, on NBC yesterday, uh, you said that you see um, there being an accumulation of what you described as circumstantial evidence. Uh, that there was collusion uh, between uh, this Russian operation and associates of Donald Trump during the campaign. Can you just expand on that a little bit, what you meant by circumstantial evidence and the, uh, both the, the, the limits of that, but also the extent of it? Well, you know, I know uh, when you use that term, a lot of people think that circumstantial evidence isn't very telling, it isn't very powerful, uh, but it all depends on what kind of circumstantial evidence. I can't go into a lot of specifics here, but probably the best example for your viewers is uh, if you go outside in the afternoon and there's no snow on the ground and you wake up the next morning and there is snow on the ground, you can pretty well conclude that it snowed overnight. That's circumstantial. Uh, if you see the snow coming down, then you can say, I have direct evidence that it snowed. Uh, so circumstantial evidence can be very, very powerful and indicative of something that's happened. Uh, and here, you know, I, I think we can say certainly that uh, the, the director uh, made clear today that he had a basis uh, in specific or credible information or evidence to initiate an investigation of the Trump campaign. That's not something that you do lightly or at the drop of a hat or on a whim or someone suggesting, you know, third party hearsay. Uh, no, as the director made clear, you not only need to have a certain quantum of evidence, but it has to be a high enough priority uh, to supersede other investigations that you can't do uh, at the same time because of lack of resources. So 
this was obviously a big deal. And uh, I, I think we also can see some very direct evidence of deception, which raises profound questions about why are they hiding what they're hiding? Why did Michael Flynn lie about his conversation with the Russian ambassador? Why wasn't Jeff Sessions more forthcoming, to put it charitably, with the Senate about his meetings with the Russian ambassador? Uh, what about Paul Manafort? Why did he lie about the Trump campaign role uh, in fending off an amendment that uh, at the Republican Party convention that would have provided for defensive weapons for Ukraine? Why all the deception? Uh, if this is above board, why do they need to hide it? Uh, and I think certainly those are important questions to answer.